First up, we have Emma Roberts. The actress is certified Hollywood royalty, being the niece of Julia Roberts. But that didn't save her from getting cancelled last September when her co-star Angelica Ross spoke out against her. The two of them starred in American Horror Story together, and according to Angelica, it was nothing short of a nightmare. Apparently, Emma irritated almost every actor on the set because she was playing mind games with people. Angelica said, My blood is boiling because I'm like, if I say something, it's going to be me that's the problem. I know this because there was someone who spoke up about what she was doing and they got repercussions from it. Not her, they did. So she chose not to report it because she felt she would be retaliated against. After that incident, apparently the two of them didn't speak for the rest of their time filming together. She also claimed that Emma yelled at directors and tried to compare salaries with her co-stars. All because she was trying to make it very clear that she was number one on the call sheet and she was the one in charge. So it sounds like she was terrorizing people in general, upsetting other actors, and throwing her weight around in an unsufferable way. Once this story came out, there was intense backlash against the actress and problematic past behavior. So it's safe to say she won't be on the red carpet for a little while. Next up, we have Star Trek actor Zachary Quinto, who was exposed for his horrible behavior online. A Toronto restaurant called Manita recently accused him of berating staff, driving the host to tears, and freaking out other customers during brunch. They posted a statement on their Instagram story saying, Zachary Quinto, an amazing Spock, but a terrible customer. Yelled at staff like an entitled child after he didn't reply to two texts to inform him his table was ready, and refused to believe the empty tables in the dining room weren't available for him despite being politely informed that they were spoken for. The message went on to say, made our host cry and the rest of our brunch diners uncomfortable. Mr. Quinto, take your bad vibes somewhere else. We have many lovely celebrities join us at Manita, but you are not one of them. Zachary is most known for playing Commander Spock in the Star Trek movies between 2009 and 2016 and has gone on to have a very successful career ever since. He was also a fan favorite in American Horror Story. The potential PR dent comes at a sensitive time for the actor considering that he has a new medical drama coming out called Brilliant Minds, which is set to premiere in the fall. So it's no surprise that fans are upset about this news. After all, you have to be a pretty entitled celebrity to get yourself banned from a restaurant. That brings us to James Corden. The famous talk show host is now one of the most hated celebrities in Hollywood, and a lot of it comes down to what people say is his fake personality. On screen, he seems to be a funny and lovable guy, but in real life, it appears to be a different story entirely. Some of the allegations against James include him reportedly screaming at staff at the Balthazar restaurant in New York because his wife received an egg yolk omelet with egg white in it. He was banned from the restaurant, and the owner claims he is the most abusive customer ever. In 2010, a moment of genuine drama unfolded at the Glamour Awards ceremony as Corden clashed with X-Men star Patrick Stewart on stage. As he walked up on stage, Stewart told Corden to get his hands out of his pockets and accused him of looking around as if he would rather be anywhere in the world but here. In response, Corden said, Oh, you couldn't be more wrong, sir. You couldn't be more wrong, genuinely. And if it looked like that, I am so sorry. But when you come up and present an award, just get on with it. Stewart kept the argument going, though, and things got incredibly awkward for everyone watching. Truly a bizarre moment in award show history. Next on the list, we have Amy Schumer, perhaps the most hated comedian in the world. Amy Schumer has gone through her fair share of hate, including multiple viral YouTube videos with titles such as Watching Amy Schumer Until I Laugh, where the video is actually one hour long. Reasons behind the hating of Amy Schumer include allegations of her stealing jokes, and the proof is pretty wild. One user on Reddit pitched their opinion on the comedian, saying, I really liked her on Inside Amy Schumer, so I went and got tickets to one of her comedy shows. She was an hour late to the show. After some time, the crowd got restless, so they sent some poor intern or something to fill in the time to tell some jokes. Everyone booed him. When Amy did show, she showed up drunk, did about 40 minutes of bad jokes, which just basically involved insulting the audience, and it was over. It was the worst show I've ever been to, hated her ever since. Moving on to Chrissy Teigen, the cookbook author faced heavy criticism in recent years following reports of cyberbullying. Many celebrities came forward to accuse Teigen, including Lindsay Lohan, Farrah Abraham, and Project Runway star Michael Costello. Teigen publicly apologized for her past behavior multiple times, including in a lengthy post on Medium, which she shared on social media. She also opened up about being in the cancel club following the controversy. Teigen wrote on Instagram in July saying, going outside sucks and doesn't feel right. Being at home alone with my mind makes my depressed head race. 
She ended her post jokingly asking if there was a cancel club reunion she could attend. From there, she was dealt a huge blow after reports circulated that retail giant Bloomingdale's had pulled out of a deal it had in place with the model. Macy's also said that it's not actively selling her cookbook cravings on their site, and it's difficult to see how her career will recover from such bad publicity. Next up, we have Jonah Hill. Earlier this year, the actor and comedian was exposed online by his ex-girlfriend who claimed that he was controlling and misogynistic. These events have collectively sparked outrage, mostly from other women who said they've had similar experiences in relationships. It started on July 7th, when Sarah Brady shared a series of Instagram stories detailing Jonah's behavior while they were together. She posted DMs and texts that she claims were sent to her when they were dating. She wrote, sharing this publicly now because keeping it to myself would causing more damage to my mental health than sharing it ever could do. This is a warning to all girls, if your partner is talking to you like this, make an exit plan, call me if you need an ear. So what was in these messages? Well, one of them appears to show him chastising her for posting photos of herself surfing in a bikini. When she deletes some of the photos, Jonah allegedly tells her that it's a good start, but that she still doesn't seem to get it. He explains what kind of behavior he feels is crossing his boundaries. This includes her surfing with other men modeling, posting pictures of herself in a bathing suit, and having friendships with women who are in unstable places. Another celebrity who isn't allowed on the red carpet anymore is Russell Brand. In September of last year, several women made allegations against him and more and more disturbing stories have come out about him since. The actor then had his YouTube account suspended, as well as other channels associated with his main YouTube page. He denied everything and issued a video message on social media saying that the stories about him were from a time when he was still acting in the movies. But that was not enough to stop Russell from getting cancelled. His management agency, Travis Stockwood terminated all professional ties to him, saying in a statement, Russell Brand categorically and vehemently denied the allegation made in 2020, but we now believe we were horribly misled by him. Paramount Plus then removed one of his stand-up comedy specials, and the BBC said it removed some content featuring the actor, saying that it now falls below public expectations. After all that, it's pretty clear Russell will not be welcomed back to Hollywood or any celebrity events that he used to attend. Next up, we have Doja Cat. While her music is still as good as ever, Doja Cat is constantly finding herself in hot water these days. After losing nearly 1 million followers for hating on her own fans, she seems to have alienated her remaining fan base by wearing a shirt featuring an extremely controversial person. The picture has now been deleted from Instagram, but not before it was seen by millions. In the photo, Doja is posing in her car while wearing a t-shirt that shows a controversial comedian. After fans called her out on Instagram, she removed the images but left a blurry photo of herself in the same outfit on her Instagram story. She then uploaded a cropped version of one of the pictures, but fans made sure she knew that they hadn't forgotten about the controversy. Not too long ago, she called out some of her stands for creating their own unofficial nickname for her loyal fan base because she didn't sign off on it and she clearly hates the name. She went on a bit of a Twitter rant and wrote, My fans don't get to name themselves. If you call yourself a kitten or effing kittens, that means you need to get off your phone and get a job and help your parents with the house. Doja ended up losing more than half a million followers and to this day she has not changed her opinion. Moving on to Justin Timberlake whose reputation took a nosedive after his ex Britney Spears released her memoir The Woman and Me. In the book she reveals that she fell pregnant during the relationship but claims that she was forced to end it. She said, it was a surprise but for me it wasn't a tragedy. I loved Justin so much, I always expected us to have a family together one day. This would just be much earlier than I'd anticipated. But she said that Justin definitely wasn't happy about the pregnancy. He said that they weren't ready to have a baby in their lives and that they were way too young. Britney revealed that if the decision had been left up to her alone, she never would have done it. But she only did so because Justin was so sure that he didn't want to be a father. Looking back at the experience, she said, To this day, it's one of the most agonizing things I have ever experienced in my life. So it's no surprise the internet has been looking back at Justin's past actions with distaste from how he publicly discussed discussed his relationship with Britney to the media and insulted her after it was over and using her to launch his career. It's no wonder fans have totally turned their back on him. 
And lastly, we have Sasha Baron Cohen. The comedian was swiftly cancelled this year when actress Rebel Wilson spoke out against him in her memoir. She said that she felt humiliated by Sasha on the set of the 2016 movie The Brothers Grimsby. Rebel said she would never be on a movie set with him again and went on to describe the nightmare of working with him behind the scenes. It was so bad that she said that no sum of money, not even $50 million, could convince her to work with him again. A representative for Sasha then came out with a statement in response saying, while we appreciate the importance of speaking out, these demonstrably false claims are directly contradicted by extensive, detailed evidence, including contemporaneous documents, film footage, and eyewitness accounts from those present before, during, and after the production of The Brothers Grimsby. But clearly, fans were already turning against him by this point, and the backlash was intensifying. It didn't help that Sasha had a reputation for causing trouble. Back in 2012 at the Oscars, he had an infamous interview with Ryan Seacrest. It was a complete complete mess. While still in character from one of his movies, Sasha emptied an urn all over Ryan and the ashes went everywhere. It was a complete disaster. No wonder reporters tend to avoid him on the red carpet. Starting off, we have Kelly Rowland and an assistant. Insiders have revealed the reason why Kelly Rowland scolded an assistant on the red carpet at the Cannes Film Festival this past week. Now Kelly was attending the premiere of the French film Marcelo Mio. As Kelly made her way up the famous steps, she appeared to engage in a verbal dispute with a member of security after she held up her arm to guide her into the venue. It has been revealed that the fight happened because staff members at the festival were being aggressive and Kelly had had it with them. The people who are assigned to helping stars walk the red carpet were being aggressive and Kelly was trying to ignore it, the source said. By the time she got to the last woman, she had had it because she scolded Kelly and told her to move when she was trying to wave to fans and help the paparazzi get their shot, they added. Now the source also revealed she doesn't care if she comes across like a diva if she knows that she's advocating for herself. She isn't fake and wanted to set a clear boundary. Footage from the altercation shows a furious Kelly visibly scolding the staff member as she held up her finger to scold the woman in front of the crowd in attendance. Now the security guard appeared to frantically respond to Kelly who even turned back to continue her tirade as she made her way up the rest of the steps. Next up is Cardi B and Nicki Minaj. Now the queens of rap had an altercation during New York fashion week in 2018. Sources stated that Cardi B reportedly became upset with Nicki after she heard she was criticizing her skills as a mother. A video was posted of Cardi B shouting and lunging towards someone believed to be Nicki. Shoes were thrown. No photos of the incident showed Cardi B being escorted out of the party barefoot with a sizable bump on her forehead, presumably caused by Nicki's security detail who intervened after Cardi threw a shoe at Nicki. Now after the incident, Cardi took to Instagram and wrote that she lets a lot slide and that the fight was a result of Nikki's questioning of her capabilities as a mother. Now speaking on her radio show later, Nikki said, get this woman some effing help. And after that, Cardi took to Instagram again to debunk Nikki's side of the story. Apparently they have squashed any issues they've had with each other at the moment, but who knows if this feud will reignite again. Then there's Machine Gun Kelly and Conor McGregor. At the 2021 VMAs, UFC fighter Conor McGregor and Machine Gun Kelly almost got involved in a fight on the red carpet. According to page six, the pair had to be separated as they walked the red carpet at the annual event, with McGregor seemingly throwing a punch in Machine Gun Kelly's direction. A source also alleged to page six that McGregor threw a drink over MGK, and photos suggested that there was no love lost between the pair. In fact, one eagle-eyed witness shared video footage of the fight on Twitter, and it certainly looked like the professional fighter was ready to engage in a full-on punching match with the musician. Now, despite there being a slew of photographic and video evidence of the almost beatdown, McGregor's representative released a statement to Page Six saying, Connor only fights fighters. Now, according to Radar Online sources, there was a lot of screaming between the pair on the red carpet, with security guards trying to intervene and stop the altercation from escalating. Now, it remains unclear why McGregor and Machine Gun Kelly were fighting, but it was a crazy interaction overall. Moving on to Dakota Johnson and Melanie Griffith. Now, for those of you who don't know, yes, Dakota Johnson is a nepotism baby. Now, at the time of this red carpet interview with her mother, Melanie Griffith, her movie, Fifty Shades of Grey, had recently come out. Now, being rated R due to themes and nude scenes, an interviewer asked Melanie if she had seen the film. 
Now, Melanie will do anything to support her daughter, except watching a sexually explicit film starring her. And honestly, I don't blame her. The two got into a very uncomfortable conversation after being asked whether Melanie had seen the movie. Melanie simply responded no, then added, I don't think I can, I think it would be strange. All right, you don't have to see it, argued Dakota. If she tells me to see it, I'll see it, her mother said. And Dakota followed this up with, I tell you to see it, and you're like, eh. Definitely an awkward moment between a mother and daughter in general, but in regards to them talking about Fifty Shades of Grey, I feel like it's even awkwarder. I just want to know who greenlit that question for the interviewer because it's an incredibly awkward and strange question to ask. Now there's Aubrey Plaza and Michael Sarah. Things got awkward on the red carpet between Aubrey Plaza and Michael Sarah. Aubrey was doing an interview with Sun TV about her film Scott Pilgrim vs. the World when Michael jokingly grabbed the microphone. Aubrey snapped at him saying seriously don't do that. She then started yelling at him and this leads to an abrupt end to the interview. However, it seems as though that Aubrey might have just been playing things up and that seems to be the general sense to fans as well. Now the pair get along so well and also fun fact, they actually almost got married. Now perhaps Aubrey was trying to find a way out of the interview and she found it thanks to Michael. On the other hand, some fans think the entire ordeal was fake and was just a fun prank for the two of them. Now with their sense of humor, it definitely seems like a prank to me. but. But it's just a really cringy moment. Now let's talk about Miley Cyrus and Liam Hemsworth. In August 2019, it was announced that Miley Cyrus and Liam Hemsworth had split up after tying the knot in December 2018. Now since then, the general public has been reflecting on the couple's relationship and dug up some footage of them acting strange on the red carpet. In a video of the pair at the premiere of Avengers Endgame in 2019, Miley can be seen pretending to lick her husband, which Liam doesn't look overly happy. Happy about. Now it's even been suggested that he may have been saying, could you behave for once? Now as the Avengers Endgame premiere took place just several months before the couple confirmed their split, it is extremely possible that there was some tension between the pair. MTV News reported on an additional video clip from the event, which allegedly showed Liam expressing his disdain as Miley started twerking on the red carpet. Now basically this particular joint appearance likely wasn't as picture perfect as it initially seemed. Moving on to Hugh Grant. Grant and Ashley Graham. While walking the red carpet at the 2023 Oscars, Hugh Grant was quickly called out online after an interview with Ashley Graham on ABC's Academy Awards pre-show. When asked by the model what his favorite part of the awards ceremony was, he responded, it's fascinating, the whole world of humanity is here, it's Vanity Fair. Things only got more awkward as Hugh began unenthusiastically responding with short answers, such as saying he wasn't rooting for any nominees in particular, and stating that he couldn't remember the name of the tailor who worked on his suit. Now the interview concluded with Ashley asking him about appearing in one of the night's nominated films, Glass Onion and Knives Out Mystery, in which he made a cameo as the partner of Daniel Craig's detective character. Well, I'm barely in it, he stated. I'm in it for about three seconds. Now on top of that, when asked if he had fun shooting the Knives Out sequel, he simply responded with, almost. Twitter then went crazy calling out his behavior and it was just a plain awkward exchange, but all I gotta say is poor Ashley. Then there's Sasha Baron Cohen and Ryan Seacrest. In the span of a week in 2012, Sasha Baron Cohen went from being banned from attending the Oscars dressed up as his latest character, The Dictator, to getting a last minute invite from the Academy to dumping what he said were Kim Jong-il's ashes on Ryan Seacrest during E's live red carpet coverage of the event. Now, emerging from a limo flanked by two women and dressed as General Aladdin, a fictional ruler invented by the comedian, Sasha marched straight up to Ryan and declared death to the West before accidentally dumping an urn of the North Korean ruler's ashes all over a seemingly stunned Ryan. Now after Sasha left, Ryan said, I had an idea something was coming. I didn't know in what fashion or form. Now you know why this isn't taped. Anything can happen and it most certainly did all over my lapel. It was definitely strange and awkward and it's one of the most embarrassing red carpet moments of all time. Up next is David Arquette and RJ City. In 2018, David Arquette got into a physical altercation after a man ambushed him on a red carpet. Now the man who ambushed David was pro wrestler RJ City, who David was supposed to wrestle that weekend. Now the incident went down when David was on the red carpet at the 350 Days premiere in Los Angeles. Video of the July 12th incident posted to TMZ showed David chatting with photographers 
photographers and reporters when RJ approaches him, pestering him by getting in his personal space. Now David eventually pushes RJ, who responds by slapping David in the face. See you Sunday, goodbye, RJ says, as he is escorted off the red carpet. Now the bad blood between the two began on Twitter when the duo started throwing jabs at each other. Now after the red carpet scuffle, David told reporters, I have a match with RJ City on Sunday, and apparently he bum rushed me on the red carpet. It's already been personal. And finally we have Krishan Rock and her stylist. In January 2023, Krishan Rock shocked everyone at the premiere of Baddies West when she was caught on camera throwing a punch. According to What's On Rap, who posted a video clip of the altercation on Twitter, the fight happened just three days after she announced her pregnancy and a security guard managed to stop the fight before it got any worse. Now although the video doesn't show the person Rock punched, it's been suggested that it may have been the rapper's former stylist. Now Krishan's red carpet punch isn't the first time she's been seen getting physical in public. That same month, TMZ shared video footage of her allegedly starting a fight with two women during a visit to rapper Blueface's house. According to the outlet, Krishan attempted to crash a party that was occurring in the hopes of taking her on and off partner Blueface away. TMZ reported that Rock left the party solo after the very public fight, but it's clear that she's not afraid to throw a punch on or off the red carpet. Number three, Paula Abdul. In 2012, famous judge and British bad boy Simon Cowell decided to fire his fellow X Factor judge after she went on Fox News and made herself sound just a little bit like a fool. During an interview with Q13, things start out a little rocky thanks to some audio issues causing Paula to hear a station in Texas instead of the one that she was trying to talk to. When they eventually got everything up and running, Paula was just as confusing as she was with the original audio issue. The interviewers were trying to ask her about her visit to Seattle, where Simon claimed that the worst singers he has ever encountered dwell. But instead of defending the city, Paula doubled down and agreed with Simon. But it's not the statement though that landed her in the hot seat, it was the way she was speaking. Paula had always been a little bit animated in her life, using her arms a lot when speaking to people, but she was particularly slurry and she seemed like she was under the influence of something. This was just one of several interviews where Paula was noticeably woozy. Simons actually claimed that the only reason she was invited to host on The X Factor in the first place was to see that if she would bring in the American Idol viewers. When that didn't pan out, he realized that the right move to make was just to let her go and move on to greener pastures. Of course, Paula was mad about this and confronted Simon several times, only digging herself further and further into that hole. Number two, Tom Cruise. Matt Lauer is not just a terrible man who turned out to be a creepy, creepy creepo. He was once a popular talk show host in the early 2000s. During an interview with Tom Cruise in 2005, the topic of his scientific beliefs came up that quickly sent Tom into a rant about psychiatry. Somehow the topic got into Ritalin and pseudosciences. I don't know. Tom yelled at Matt about knowing more than him about psychiatry. Like he had some inside information that he was secretly a therapist or something. The interview came at the height of Tom's very public descent into chaotic badness, becoming very famous for his outlandish beliefs and his wish to push them onto other people. The highlight of the interview came when Cruz was asked about his previous criticism of Brooke Shields taking anti-sad time pills, to which he responded by calling her a glib. And I looked up the definition, that means fluent and voluble, but insecure and shallow. This was only one of several interviews from 2005 that we could discuss today. When he was with Katie Holmes, he was a bit of a nutcase. Just ask Oprah Winfrey. Ever since the mid-2000s, Tom's career has been mainly in the Mission Impossible movies with only a few small roles to fill the gaps here and there. Not the Hollywood superstar that he was aiming to be. And at number one, Lance Armstrong. Seven-time Tour de France winner Lance Armstrong has gone down in history as a man who was unable to ride a bike without his chemical training wheels. In an interview with Oprah Winfrey in 2013, Lance was brought on to discuss the allegations floating around regarding his status as a Tour de France winner. Several sources claimed that Lance had taken performance enhancing substances to win each of his races, as well as a type of transfusion involving the red life juice that flows inside all of us. Armstrong went on air and fessed up to every single thing that they were claiming he had done. However, he did deny the notion that he was some kind of a mastermind who would control his teammates and force them to join in his extracurricular activities. But amidst his admission of guilt, say that 10 times fast, there was a moment where he tried to pin 
the situation on his battle with cancer. He wraps it up by saying that he should have tried harder to cancel the culture rather than create more of a problem. He was stripped of all seven Tour de France titles, and he has since lived in exile among the cycling world. Number 10, Hugh Grant. In 2023, the world was gifted with an awkward interview between model Ashley Graham and Dungeons and Dragons star Hugh Grant. Ashley was trying her best to give a good interview and ask Hugh the hard hitting questions. Like, who was he wearing? Was he excited to be there? Did he hope anyone won? You know, the generic questions they tell you to ask on day one. Hugh was not budging to the point where she just kind of gave up and let him loose. One of her last questions to Hugh was regarding his cameo in the Netflix film Glass Onion, which he says was barely a full day on set. The incident sparked a ton of backlash, mainly aimed at Hugh for making Ashley's job more and more difficult because he wasn't even responding to that first round of questioning. But then the narrative switched to why wasn't she asking him better questions? ABC decided that the hosting gig was going to go to somebody else next year and it's looking like she won't be making any more interview appearances anytime soon. Number 9, Rachel Zegler. Rachel Zegler's comments about the upcoming live action Snow White movie could have a huge impact on ticket sales, according to branding experts. The 22 year old actress has received plenty of backlash after she admitted that she hated the original 1937 movie and branded the storyline as weird, while referring to the prince character as a stalker. Not wrong. The backlash occurred after several videos of Rachel speaking negatively about the original film in various interviews last year that resurfaced online, where she talked about her version of this character saying that she's not going to be saved by a prince and she's not going to be dreaming about true love. While Disney may just be trying to modernize the classic, these comments were causing her to be labeled as a fake feminist. Some critics accused Rachel of gaslighting and one marketing consultant has warned that Disney will need to be careful with how they've portrayed Snow White. Snow White has already been suffering from backlash well before Rachel made her comments. Peter Dinklage spoke out about Disney not using true dwarf actors for the new film and instead opting to use heavy CGI on Hollywood elites. Rachel's role as Snow White is in the air as of filming because while this film is set to release in March, the writers and actor strike set production back so who knows maybe they recast her in the background while we weren't paying attention. Number 8, Adam Driver. Adam Driver is an incredible actor and I personally got to see him perform for the first time in a little rom-com alongside Daniel Radcliffe called The F Word. If you've ever seen that, check it out. It's a great movie. And then I saw Star Wars. Okay, don't worry. I know that he's Kylo Ren. This year, Adam had the chance to play one of the creator of one of the fastest and most recognizable car brands in the entire world, Enzo Ferrari of Ferrari Cars. The film has been receiving some pretty solid reviews following in the shadows of films like Ford v Ferrari from a couple of years back. It seems like we might get a cinematic universe of stories behind popular car brands. There's a DeLorean movie, there's this movie, they should just make a movie about Subarus next. My parents love Subarus, they're great cars. While doing press for the film, Adam was involved in a Q&A that resulted in one of the best Adam Driver clips to ever exist. A man in the audience asks Adam how he feels about stunt racing scenes as they are pretty intense, harsh, and honestly in their opinion, cheesy. Cheesy? <laughs> Adam doesn't like that word. He sips his water and with very little hesitation he says, I don't know, F you. Next question. The clip became viral very fast and people are actually praising Adam for his response. People at these events are given a rare chance to speak with actors, directors, and everything in between. So when someone takes that precious time just to tell you how they feel about something and to see if you agree, eh, it's just a waste of time. Number 7, Pedro Pascal. Pedro is another treasure in this world. Not only has his energy and genuine personality been showcased in his TV and film roles, but he's become one of the most recognizable faces in meme culture. He's also been involved in projects from every genre, comedy, action, horror, and now live action video game adaptations thanks to the Last of Us series. Earlier this year, he was attending the premiere of season 3 of The Mandalorian, and an interviewer stopped him on the red carpet and asked if he might like to read some first tweets to the camera. This was unprompted and never confirmed to be okay with Pedro beforehand before he was put on camera. Pedro took the piece of paper that he was handed, it contained the tweets, he giggled, took a moment to read it over, and with a big smile on his face just gave them a sincere no, and then called the comments too dirty to read. But being the man that he is, he told them that they were doing a great job and that those were some thirsty tweets. He was not insulted by this interaction at all, and if anything, it's just another clip that showcased cases how much of a gem this man really is. Number 6, Dax Shepard. In September of this year, an individual named Jonathan Van Ness or JVN made an appearance on Dax's podcast Armchair 
experts. JVN rose to fame after appearing on the series Queer Eye and has continued to work in several sections of the beauty and fashion industry for years. While speaking with Dax, known best as a comedic actor for movies like Employee of the Month and Idiocracy, he actually ended up bringing JVN to tears thanks to his comments towards the concept of transitioning and gender affirming care. During the conversation, Dax wished to debate both sides, to which JVN responded with several well researched points. Dax's views have always been questioned as they seem to be based in misinformation and are actually anti trans in general. Towards the end of the conversation, and after JVN basically had to defend their beliefs over and over again, Dax apologized and acknowledged that he should not have put JVN in that position. Jay expresses their exhaustion of having to justify these comments and fight for the rights of younger people who are transitioning. JVN is just very passionate about youth, especially being accepted and involved in as many activities and interests as possible in their lives. Dax has been called out for his comments when the entire point of the podcast was to discuss JVN's own podcast, so you might say he went a little off topic. Number 5. Tony Danza Modern audiences may not know much about Tony Danza, but if you're a fan of the 80s and 90s, this man will have come across your screen once or twice. Starring in shows like Taxi and Who's the Boss, Tony dominated the sitcom scene for a solid portion of his career. Earlier this year, at the Broadway premiere of New York, an interviewer named Rye Myers asked Tony a question about New York that left Danza branded as one of the rudest celebrities in the world. He was simply asking Tony what his favorite NYC staple food was. Pizza Pizza, hot dogs, you know, what makes Tony tick? Instead of answering the rather simple question and just moving on, he took a moment to pause and tell Rye that he should get better questions, and even told him to relax. The clip went viral and people quickly began supporting Myers, even the great Michael Buble chimed in to let him know that he loved him and was ready to share a pizza with him at any time if Tony wasn't invited. Tony actually reached out later on and apologized for his response, deciding that he ultimately wanted to squash the beef. Things were patched up, but that is still an extremely rude and awkward moment. Number 4. Doja Cat. The Met Gala always seems to bring in some truly memorable moments. You know, whether it's an outlandish outfit or an interview where they just meow the entire time, it's a weird place to be. Yes, Doja Cat went to the Met Gala in 2023 dressed as a cat. She literally had prosthetic nose on her face and prosthetics on her eyebrows, all the while wearing a sparkly silver dress with little sparkly ears on top. Emma Chamberlain decided that Doja was the woman that she needed to interview. No one else, Doja Cat was the one, which ended up being a very bad decision. Great, well, bad for her, great for us. Doja responded to every single question that this woman asked with a resounding meow. At one point, she actually attempts to tell a story and meows a few times with different tones. Like, meow, meow, meow. The entire time, the guy who is standing with her is just kind of like, yeah, this, that's Doja Cat. She's been doing this for a month now. The moment was honestly more entertaining than rude, but I'm not sure if this was planned beforehand or not. If it was, great meme, good job. If it's not, this is horrible and Doja, you need to chill. Number 3. Liam Neeson Liam may be known for his serious roles and for being you know, one of the worst parents in cinematic history, but this year he was known as an uncomfortable man thanks to his appearance on the show The View. Appearing to discuss his career and potential projects coming down the line, the conversation shifted after one of the hosts, Anna Navarro, jabbed Joy Behar about her crush on Liam Neeson, saying that there was at least one woman on this panel that would love to be taken by Liam. Ew. The show then played a supercut of all the times that Joy has spoken about Liam, including a time when she said that she would want to have her ashes sprinkled over him, and another bit where she admitted to getting a little aroused when she saw him on screen. Liam joked at first, asking Joy if she received the checks, insinuating that she gets paid every time she talks about him. Following the interview, Liam felt the whole thing to be a little bit of a waste of time. The segment about the crush was long and is a crush that materialized like 15 years ago. Eventually, he had a normal conversation but overall it was just a little uncomfortable. Number 2. Chloe Fineman For anyone who does not know Chloe Fineman, I'm sorry. She is currently working as a cast member on Saturday Night Live and she's genuinely doing a great job and is hilarious. Fortunately, earlier this year, she was involved in a red carpet interview that proved how little she actually knew about some of the celebrities involved with the event she was at. Fineman hosted the Vogue live stream of the 2023 Met Gala alongside Derek Blasberg. The pair were eventually joined by Aubrey 
Avenue Plaza, Madeline Klein, the designer of many dresses from the evening, and Stella McCartney. As the interview began, Feynman attempts to introduce the women that she's interviewing, but fumbles all of their names, one of them on purpose. Instead of calling them by their first names, she refers to Madeline and Stella as McCartney and Klein. She then calls Aubrey Plaza Audrey, and Plaza improvised her own last name, Slutburn, which may have to be bleeped out, but I really hope it's not. Chloe and Aubrey actually know each other very well and have worked together in a few times. <clears throat> Chloe and Aubrey actually know each other really well and they've worked together a few times in the past so this was clearly just an inside joke. McCartney was having none of these shenanigans though. Chloe instinctively laughed when someone makes a joke so when the women kept responding to the questions what are you wearing with each other's last names she had to giggle. McCartney asked her if she was taking this seriously and the tension dissipated only when she asked McCartney about taking over for Carl Lagerfeld, Lagerfeld, the designer of the night, <laughs> the designer that the night had been themed after. Yeah I don't know how to say his last name, please don't comment about it. The moment was tense and we're sure Chloe was happy to get back to world of sketch comedy as soon as possible. And at number one, Jada Pinkett Smith. Every single interview that this woman has ever done has had some kind of shade or hidden meaning behind it, whether it's trying to patch things up with someone on her own little Facebook talk show that hurt her, or just telling the world every single dirty detail about Will Smith that she knows. This woman is a menace who makes for uncomfortable interviews and moments every time she is on screen. This year alone, she outed her marriage as a sham, claimed Tupac Shakur was in love with her, and wrote a book about everything in between. Don't buy it. Starting off our list today at number 10, we have Isaac Mazarhi. While Isaac Mazarhi was acting as an interviewer for E! on the red carpet for the Golden Globes, he would have a troubling interview with Scarlett Johansson. Scarlett, who was attending as a supporting actress nominee for Match Point, would be left feeling shocked after Isaac decided to touch her chest in the interview because he wanted to know if the actress had a bra under her stunning red dress. As he gave it a quick squeeze, he would then say, I'm just taking notes notes for next time I make a then he would be cut off by Scarlett who said what is going on and then she said absolutely take all the notes you want the actress then later said oh my god while Isaac did later apologize for offending anyone the Academy of Motion Pictures of Arts then had to issue their own statement when they said I can predict we would be extraordinary angry if that happened on our red carpet I cannot predict what we would do afterwards number nine Kesha Remember that time when Jerry Seinfeld savagely refused to hug Kesha during a red carpet interview? Not once, not twice, but three painful times. It was truly the stuff of nightmares, but watching it from the comfort of our own homes made for some great laughs. Although Kesha was silent about the issue for some time, she would come out in 2017 to break the silence on what happened after she rudely interrupted Jerry in an interview to ask him for a hug. Jerry would then later sit down for an interview with AJ Calloway, where he explained that he didn't hug Kesha because he simply didn't know her and admitted, I'm 63. I don't know every pop star. I have to meet someone to say hello. I gotta start somewhere. For Kesha's part, she remained pretty quiet on the whole issue as she was presumably recovering from all the overwhelming embarrassment of being rejected so publicly like that. However, a day after the video went viral, she did post an Instagram photo of her cat with some pretty suggestive hashtags. Hey, my little peaches, are you liking this video so far? If so, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and you know subscribe to the channel. Coming number eight we have Tommy Lee Jones. When Joan and Melissa Rivers were asked who their least favorite person to interview on the red carpet was, they didn't have to think twice before responding and they both ended up saying Tommy Lee Jones. In 2013 HuffPost Live asked the famous mother and daughter duo about their worst celebrity interview and Melissa immediately said Tommy Lee Jones. To which Joan responded by saying oh without a question HuffPost then went on to ask the pair to elaborate on the assertion to which Melissa went on to know he's at the top of everybody's list. He doesn't want to be there, he's unhappy doing the red carpet, and he's going to make everyone else around him just as unhappy in the experience. Joan then would go on to sum up the issue nicely by saying, Jones went to Harvard and is very impressed by that accomplishment. She then went on to say, we all went to Ivy League schools, calm down. Number seven, John Travolta. 
Travolta. In 2015, John Travolta once again became the talk of the Oscars after he had a pretty off encounter with Scarlett Johansson that had some of us scratching our heads. Scarlett, who co-starred with John in the film, a love story for Bobby Long, told the Associated Press that the picture of him kissing her on the red carpet was taken out of context. She then went on to say there is nothing strange, creepy, or inappropriate about John Travolta. The image that is circulating is unfortunate, still framed from a live action encounter that was a very sweet and total welcome. She then went on to add that the photo did not reflect the live moment and that we were all being misguided and misinformed and that she hadn't seen John in some years and it was always a pleasure to be greeted by him, yet her face in the photo said otherwise. Number 6. Ryan Seacrest In 2019, Grammy viewers would slam Ryan Seacrest for his awkward Lady Gaga red carpet interview. When Ryan tried to interview the superstar, he didn't so much ask her questions as he just chose to speak to her. And when Lady Gaga did try to speak, Ryan would just end up cutting her off without even giving her the chance to speak properly. He then went on to tell her that she should be performing at the Oscars, for which she is a multiple nominee for, and she responded by saying, that was like, answer my question, but I'm not asking one. Ryan then tried to recover from the interview, but then made an awkward joke about him not asking her questions before saying they were cutting to break. Gaga was a good sport in handling the awkward interview, playing along with his joke that carried on for way too long as there was a delay in going to the advertisements. Before the interview was over, she did pull a host of awkward faces before eventually hugging Ryan and leaving. Number 5. David Lee Roth In 2019, David Lee Roth had a pretty bizarre red carpet interview that taught us all that you can either wear all sorts of outlandish things or nothing, and you can also be as prerogative as you want in the name of artistry, and flaunt your questionable decisions all over social media. The king of being completely insane during the red carpet interview will always go to David Lee Roth. David, who was set to perform at the Billboard Music Awards, was being interviewed by E! on the red carpet special. During the interview, he would start out on solid footing, discussing Van Halen's dance influence and how what they did in the 80s has informed today's pop music, which was okay. But things took a quick turn when he decided to quickly go off the rails and somehow West Side Story, Low Riders, and David's abundance of black and Hispanic friends all came up. The whole interview was just him inspiring to get on Miley's level of interviews and it was just completely weird. Go give it a watch. Number 4. Tiffany Haddish When Entertainment Tonight's Lauren Zima seemed to have accidentally called Tiffany Haddish's new Oscar after party dress a costume change, things quickly went south and when Tiffany fired back at Lauren saying, I'm not wearing a costume, I'm wearing Dose and Gabbana, the actress was clearly not done firing back at the reporter when she then went on to educate her on costumes and outfits by saying, it's called an evening gown darling, no one is paying for this, I paid for it, it's custom. Thank you. That's when the reporter jokingly announced it was her time to pass away, pretended to faint in an attempt to ease the tension, and Tiffany's response, may I add, was, this is what fame looks like, this is what success looks like, this is what money looks like, and yeah, the moment is just as brutal to watch as you would expect. And take notes, because if it's not Halloween, it's not a costume, and you definitely don't want to make the same mistake unless you want to be embarrassed on the red carpet by some of Hollywood's biggest stars. Coming number three, we have Jack Harlow. Jack Harlow won once left Emma Chamberlain in a pretty awkward red carpet interview. That became one of the most hilarious and viral moments of 2022 when Emma, who is a big YouTuber, was interviewing Jack Harlow for Vogue. What started off as a pretty interesting interview would then randomly turn a different way when Jack decided out of nowhere that he was going to hit her with a totally random love you, and then he quickly turned away and left the interview. Now you're probably wondering what happened next. Well, as the rapper walked away, the camera would zoom in on Emma and it would give up a glorious image of her staring into space and questioning her entire reality, which was honestly a 10 out of 10 reaction, but considering their age difference, the gesture was just completely weird. Number two, we have Sutton Strachey. Okay, we all know that there's no one more dramatic than the Real Housewives cast. As they always seem to do shady things at the most random times, like the time Sutton Strachey showed up to the People's Choice Awards in 2022. And just like the show, she brought 
some drama. When the interviewer asked her if she would like Lisa to return to the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, the reality TV personality definitely didn't have anything nice to say. She then chose to look at the reporter in the camera in total silence. And she stayed like this until the reporter moved on to the next question. It was a question she actually wanted to respond to. The reporter then went on to the next question by saying anyways. But just before, if you caught a look at Sutton, you would see that she was baffled and she looked pretty mean and scary to the point it would have caused any reporter to end the interview and move on to the next star. It's safe to say that Sutton doesn't really like Lisa and doesn't want her to return to the show anytime soon. And coming at number one today, we have Sasha Baron Cohen. Coming at number one today, we have Sasha Baron Cohen. When he showed up to the red carpet dressed as his character from The Dictator, his look was completely pushing boundaries as he proceeded on the red carpet accompanied by female bodyguards in an urn which he stated was filled with Kim Jong Un's ashes. While the whole interview and actions were very off putting and not really professional, things took a quick turn to the worst when he decided to accidentally dump the material all over Ryan Seacrest's Burberry tux. While everyone was shocked at what actually happened, Ryan Seacrest actually showed the world what a true professional he is and he brushed it off. And he brushed it off quite literally, may I add. But still, the interview was pretty disturbing and Sasha shouldn't be playing sensitive games like that. Starting off our list today at number 10, we have Liam Hensworth. Thanks to Miley Cyrus's new hit song, Flowers, it's been number one on the billboard for three weeks. And because the song is so popular, it resurfaced a couple of clips that shows Liam Hensworth visibly cringing at his ex-wife, Miley Cyrus, on the red carpet during interviews. In one video, Miley could be seen twerking on Liam at a Vanity Fair Oscars after party in February of 2019. As the two were being interviewed, Liam then backed away quickly and looked incredibly uncomfortable as she danced for the cameras. To which he responded by saying, don't do it, don't do it, you're scarring everyone on the red carpet. Miley then immediately stopped and glanced awkwardly at the camera. In another clip uploaded, the couple could be seen attending the Avengers Endgame premiere and the singer tried to pose cheekily with her husband and she made this move to lick his neck and Liam was displeased and told Miley to behave for once. And when he went on to cling onto her waist, she seemed to be very annoyed at his gesture and pushed his hand away which resulted in him walking away while she continued posing on her own. Number 9, Dakota Johnson What was supposed to be a sweet mother and daughter moment during the Oscars red carpet show ended up becoming one of the night's most awkward interviews. When ABC host Laura Spencer asked the actress Melanie Griff if she was going to see her daughter's racy movie Fifty Shades of Grey. The actress would then quickly respond no before her daughter Dakota Johnson scowled and said maybe one day. However, then her mom would respond by saying I don't think I can. I think it would be strange while well, she's a good actress. I don't need to see that to no, know she's good. The subject was obviously still a sore subject and the sticking point between the pair as Dakota then jumped into a pouting teenager for a moment before snapping at her mother by saying, all right, you don't have to see it, Jesus Christ. The uncomfortable exchange between the two then set social media on fire, inspiring some harsh criticism and some pretty serious tweets. However, near the end of the night, Melanie would opt to tell Dakota that she would watch the film just so she could smooth things over between her and her daughter. Hey my little peaches, are you liking this video so far? If so, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Coming number eight, we have Shailene Woodley. So during most interviews, Shailene Woodley is always known for being really blunt when it comes to her answering questions, especially when the questions make her feel uncomfortable. During one incident on the red carpet, Shailene had a pretty awkward encounter that caused her to be dumbfounded when it came to the reporter's question. In the interview, the reporter looked at the actor and then out of nowhere asked her if she was hungry before noting that she herself was hungry. Shailene then reacted in a way that was pretty awkward and rude in the moment as she looked at her interviewer like she was crazy and said, well, you should probably eat. I don't think any of us really blame Shailene in this situation for being rude as it was such a weird question and comment to come from a reporter. Not to mention there were so many questions that the reporter could have asked her, but she chose to ask the actor if she was hungry because you aren't going to get a genuinely nice answer to that question. Number seven, Selena Gomez. During a red 
carpet interview in 2017, Billboard Woman in music events, Selena would be asked about how Justin Bieber impacted the person she is today and the singer and actor responded by being a little standoffish when she said, I don't think anyone else cares. I think for me, what's been great is that I've been able to live the life I wanted for myself and it doesn't always look the way people think it should. But it's not really my concern anymore. Look, my family is great, my health is great, I love deeply and that's just who I am. I'm not really ashamed. While the actress claimed that no one really cared about her and Justin's relationship, the Twitter reactions would definitely prove otherwise to Selena's response as one fan would say, Selena Gomez and Justin Bieber will definitely last this time if they're both on the same page romantically. And then another fan would know, so as dumb as this sounds, I'm so happy when I heard Justin Bieber and Selena Gomez are back together. It's that relationship I basically grew up with and I feel as if I'm invested in. My heart was so full when I heard the news. Even today, people are still fond on the idea that the former couple may cross paths yet again in the future and it's gotten to the point that every time Justin is happy with another woman, his fans still chant Selena's name. Number 6, Jim Carrey. Back in 2017, Jim Carrey was clearly just really bored, so the comedian decided he would randomly show up to a New York red carpet event. While on the red carpet, he made his way to a reporter and then he ended up telling her that the only reason he showed up to the event is because he was trying to find the most meaningless event he could attend. If the interview wouldn't get any more funnier due to his odd behavior, he then went on this really weird rant where he stated that icons and personalities don't really exist by saying, I don't believe in icons, I don't believe in personalities. I believe that peace lies beyond personality and invitation in disguise, beyond the red S on your chest that makes bullets bounce off. I believe that it's deeper than that. I believe we're a field of energy dancing for itself and I don't care. He then turned into one of his comedic characters before walking away when he came to the conclusion to his rant and said, we don't matter. Number five, Kim Kardashian. Back in 2019, Kim Kardashian awkwardly interrupted her older sister during an interview on the E! People's Choice Awards red carpet when E! anchor Juliana Rancy asked Kourtney Kardashian who designed her bra bearing glittering suit. She began to say she didn't plan her answer in advance, but then she was cut off when Kim decided to lunge in front of her and start to hype their new fragrance collaboration by saying, all that matters is that we're wearing KKW diamond. We're all wearing that. She then went on to tell Courtney, I was saving you since you didn't know who you were wearing. That was my save. Courtney then went on to correct Kim by saying, no, it was Naeem Khan. I just didn't know how to pronounce it. Despite the awkward moment, Courtney didn't appear to mind the publicity, but Kim didn't need to interrupt her sister's interview to support her new line, as the world was already talking about it. Number four, Jennifer Lawrence. So back in 2012, Joss Hutcherson was in an interview on the red carpet for the Catching Fire press tour when Jennifer Lawrence thought it would be a good idea to punk her co-star while he was in mid-interview by asking him how his rash was doing. Later, Josh would then open up about the incident on the late night with Jimmy Fallon, and there he would reveal that Jennifer had this history of punking him, and while making rounds on the red carpet, he then admitted at one time mid-interview, she breezed past him and asked him, hey Josh, how's the rash doing? Josh then looked extremely embarrassed before he went on to note that Jennifer was actually really crazy. The reporter then went on to question Josh about the incident, and he said, oh my rash, yeah, my rash is doing fantastic. Don't worry about that, I love Jennifer. The actor was obviously really uncomfortable with Jennifer's uncalled move. Now he wanted to end the interview and opted to say, I gotta go back to take care of the rash before running away from his interview. Number three, Nicki Minaj. Nicki Minaj is known for speaking her mind. So back in 2013, after she had a mouthful to say after a not so good interview with Access Hollywood's correspondent, Laura Saltman, the Anaconda rapper would then throw some serious shade at the reporter on the red carpet after Laura asked the rapper about her recent Twitter rant, which included catty words about fellow American Idol judge Mariah Carey. And she snapped back and refused to answer the question. When Laura asked, are you looking forward to the 
end of American Idol because I know there were Twitter comments you made today that caused quite a stir. Nikki would then respond by saying, that question didn't even make sense. So if you want to insuate what you're talking about, I'm not going to. Before Laura could even respond, Nikki would then roll her eyes, say goodnight and walk away. In light of the diss, Saltman then decided to express her feelings in a blog posted to Access Hollywood's website where she labeled Nikki as a mean girl and cyber bullying, perpetuating the problems of social media. Number two, Amber Heard. Back in 2015, Amber would be captured giving her mom a stern lesson on the red carpet about the rules she has to follow as her mom joined her at a glitzy film premiere. At the time, Amber was still married to Johnny Depp and she decided to bring her mother along for the ride at a screening of Johnny's new flick at the time, Black Mass, at Toronto's International Film Festival. Her proud mom then watched from the sidelines as Amber oozed in this striking black dress in front of the camera. However, the actress was less than impressed when she spotted her mom talking to a nearby cameraman. In a video captured, the star's mom could be seen in the video identifying herself to a man from Kiss 92.5 where she proudly gushed saying she was Amber's mom. Amber then stormed towards her mother and interrupted the interview. And in the video, you could see Amber's face. It was so stony that she may as well have been embarrassed by her mom in front of friends at a playground. She then quickly grabbed her mother, gave her a warning by saying never make eye contact. And coming in at number one today, we have Nicole Kidman. Nicole Kidman wasn't necessarily rude, but she did get a pretty funny response from Tom Middleston when she briefly interrupted him during an interview at the Golden Globes one year. Tom was in the middle of his interview talking to Liza Kashi about one of his shows and Nicole decided to insert herself in between Tom and Liza and then quickly said that's enough, enough talking. Well, Nicole was clearly just pulling Tom's leg. At first, he was a bit taken back by Nicole's actions and it did take him a bit to notice that Nicole was doing a quirky little bit. Once the actor realized Nicole was only joking, he then quickly joined in on the fun. He then conducted a quick impromptu moment in the interview with Nicole and it was definitely a moment that was awkward for a second, but then everybody laughed it off. Number 10, Zac Efron. Zach rose to fame as a Disney darling playing the leading role of Troy Bolton in the popular high school musical series. Since his Disney days, Zach has lent his face and voice to several projects. But the red carpet event that we're talking about today was for the animated Dr. Seuss movie The Lorax, which Zach, who voiced the main character of the film, was walking the red carpet when he suddenly handed his assistant something from his pocket. As he handed them the product, something fell out of his pocket and onto the carpet. Now that something is a word that I can't say online. Let's just call them love tubes. Eh, love tubes. I like that. Zach's love tube wrapper was flat on the carpet right there for the world to see. He quickly picked it up, but the damage had already been done. In the first interview following this incident, the interviewer asked Zach if there was anything unplanned that had happened. He then explained that this was a complete accident. There was no pre-show pocket check or anything that could have prevented it. Well, Illumination did not like that excuse, and they also didn't like their main star being associated with such an adult product. So, when the plans for a Lorax sequel were brought to the studios, Zack's name was left out and replaced by somebody else. I guess whoever they picked wasn't famous enough though, as the project was ultimately shelved by the studio, and thankfully Zack found work somewhere else. In Baywatch. Number 9, Taylor Swift. If there is one thing that should be known about Taylor Swift, it's that she can end an entire career with one single conversation. In 2015, Taylor was on the red carpet for the Grammy Awards when she was interviewed by a woman from Entertainment Tonight. The interviewer started the interview by asking her cameraman to pan up and down and literally checking her out as this massive camera just followed her. You know, that's not weird at all. After going along with the bit for a bit and telling the camera about her dress, the woman who was interviewing her said that she honestly just wanted a shot of Taylor's legs because she said before the show that Taylor is going to be going home with more than a trophy. Maybe a man. Ooh. Taylor didn't appreciate that comment or that assumption. She did not laugh and proceeded to tell her that she would be going home with no men, just hanging out with her friends and then home to her cats. While the majority of the interview went well, the interviewers were reprimanded behind the scenes by Taylor herself. The news of Taylor's dislike for them made its way up to the top, where the ET executives decided to keep them off the red carpet from now on. Keep your creepy camera gestures to yourself, lady. 
Number 8. Rachel Zegler Rachel Zegler's comments about the upcoming live action Snow White remake could have a huge impact on ticket sales, according to brand experts. The 22 year old actress has received plenty of backlash after she admitted that she hated the original 1937 movie and branded the storyline as weird, while referring to the prince character as a straight up stalker. The backlash occurred after several videos of Rachel speaking negatively about the original film in various interviews last year year resurfacing online, where when she spoke about her version of the character, she said that she is not going to be saved by the prince and that she is not going to be dreaming about true love. As well as being labeled a fake feminist, some critics have accused Rachel of gaslighting and one marketing consultant has warned that Disney will need to be very careful with how they have portrayed Snow White. Snow White has already been suffering from lots of backlash well before Rachel made her comments. Peter Dinklage spoke out about Disney not using true dwarf actors for the new film, instead opting to use heavy CGI on Hollywood elites. Rachel's role as Snow White is in the air as of filming this video, because thanks to her comments, the studio is rethinking the situation. While the film is set to release in March of next year, the writer's strike may be the exact moment that the studio needs to recast and rewrite its oldest character. Number 7. Jim Carrey Jim Carrey is known for his hilarious personality on and off screen, but he gave Kat Sadler from E! News and Daily Pop a very awkward interview on the red carpet at Harper Bazaar's party in 2017. The interaction started with Jim slowly circling Kat as she attempts to express her confusion and excitement. Jim Carrey was at a Fashion Week event. Was the man known for being an incredible artist, bringing his talent to the fashion world? No, no, he was just really mad about stuff. By 2017, Jim had made a name for himself as an oddly serious man who tended to venture into the realm of energies and universal concepts when getting into deep conversations. He started the conversation with, this is meaningful. And then he continued to say that he wanted to find the most meaningless thing that he could attend that evening. The event was a celebration of icons and celebrities, according to Kat, to which Jim said he did not agree, as in he didn't agree with the concept of icons. He continued to give a small speech about not believing that people truly exist, and that we are all just a field of energy, and that peace lies beyond personality, man. The entire time this interview is taking place, Kat is visibly uncomfortable, just counting down to the moment that Jim says something funny or even remotely related to fashion. Instead, he just shares his thoughts, tells her that she has a nice fragrance, and walks away. While Jim's career had already started to slow down at that point, the clip became viral and studios were wondering if he was going to be a good fit for anything anymore. Many scripts with his name on them were rewritten or simply just kept to themselves. Right up until 2020 when he made a small comeback in the surprise surprisingly fun Sonic the Hedgehog movie. Number 6. Will Smith That's right, Will Smith is on this list for hitting somebody and it's not Chris Rock. Today we're talking about an incident on the red carpet that left one paparazzo with a massive red mark on his face and a fired sign stamped on his forehead. Will was walking the red carpet giving people interviews when a Ukrainian comedian named Vitaly Sedjik approached him, a man who is unfortunately world famous for being an absolutely disgusting person towards celebrities. He pretended to be a reporter and began interviewing Will Smith. He suddenly pulled Will towards him and tried to kiss him on his cheeks and mouth. Well, Will obviously did not like that and shoved him back and gave him a little love tap. It's a little, little backhand to the face. A team of security following Mr. Smith picked this guy up and carried him away like a little toddler that he was. Who knew Will was practicing for his Oscar slaps all the way back then? Sedgwick was finally reprimanded for his actions and he was actually made to pay a hefty fine for attempting to force himself on Will Smith. Needless to say, that guy works for himself now. Number 5. Hugh Grant in 2013, the world was gifted with an awkward interview between model Ashley Graham and Dungeons & Dragons star Hugh Grant. Ashley was trying her best to give a good interview and ask Hugh the hard-hitting questions, like who was he wearing? Was he excited to be there? Did he hope anyone he knew won? You know, good old generic questions they tell you to ask on the first day of work. Hugh was not budging to the point where she just kind of gave up and let him loose. One of her last questions to Hugh was regarding his cameo in the Netflix film Glass Onion, which he said was barely a full day on set. The incident sparked a ton of backlash, mainly aimed at Hugh for making Ashley's job more and more difficult. But then the narrative switched to, why wasn't she asking him better questions? ABC decided to give the hosting gig to somebody else for next year's Oscars, and it's looking like she won't be making any more interview appearances anytime soon. 
Number 4. Amy Schumer In the mid-2010s, comedian Amy Schumer was named one of Time Magazine's top 100 most influential people and was made to attend a red carpet event to celebrate with her fellow influencers, two of whom were Kanye West and Kim Kardashian. Now, while discussing the incident on The Graham Norton Show, she revealed that there was a planned prank on Kim and Yee. Her goal was to get them to crack and smile and get some good fun pics for the event, but Kim and Kanye did not find this situation funny and continued continued to walk past her as she fell in front of them. Like she just followed forward trying to make a nice little thing out of it. While the moment was meant to create a fun scene, it instead made Amy look like she had a grudge towards Kim and Kanye. While not an interview, the incident on the red carpet did force Comedy Central to postpone a season of her show until things were sorted out with Kim. It turned out that not only did Kim not care, but she did end up finding the incident kind of funny in the end, with these two apparently now being close friends, and Amy even made a cameo on Kim's new reality series, The Kardashians. Number 3. Rashida Jones The star of comedy giants like The Office and Parks and Rec is an expert at evading uncomfortable and just strange questions. During the Screen Actors Guild Awards in 2015, she was being interviewed by TNT's Danielle Dembski when the actress was told she was very tanned. Well, Rashida replied with a small pause and then told the reporter that she was ethnic, so, you know, duh. Danielle burst into laughter before ignoring the dumb question and moving on, but TNT did not forget. Her producers made it very clear that she needed to do more research before making comments or asking questions to anyone on the carpet. According to TNT, she was let go after the meeting went south and Danielle didn't realize what she had done wrong. Oh, gee, let me think. Number 2. Silka Sibin While attending the Dutch premiere of his rom-com Music in the Lyrics, Hugh Grant, making another appearance, got the shock of a lifetime after a fan got a little bit too excited and took their admiration to a whole new level. Television journalist Silka Sibin approached Grant and he thought it was an interview, but then she handcuffed herself to him. For about 10 minutes, the patient but frustrated Grant was just waiting and watched as several onlookers started snapping pictures left and right. After the fire department finally released them, Sibin was taken by police. And while this may have seemed like your average Hollywood interaction, the news station that she worked for did not appreciate this gag and she was fired immediately. And at number one, Ryan Seacrest. Ryan was the man with the mic for a very long time, hosting not only talk shows, but reality game shows as well. Eventually though, he found a nice comfy gig interviewing celebrities on and off the red carpet. In 2018, things changed drastically after allegations of misconduct were brought forward by a former female employee named Susie Hardy. Susie was his personal hairstylist and the job was perfect for a very long time. But according to her, Ryan became very aggressive on several occasions, claiming that the only reason she never said anything was fear that she may lose the financial stability that the job had provided for herself and her daughter. In 2013, the situation finally ended when she expressed her concerns to someone at Human Resources and her employment was terminated. Now, while this was happening, Ryan was still employed as a host and a presenter, so he took to the red carpet that year to interview celebrities and he was met with cold shoulders and sarcastic comments. After the red carpet event, the decision was made to put Ryan on hold for a while until the investigation into the allegations were complete. Three months later, they concluded that there was insufficient evidence to prove the claims and Ryan got reinstated. I'm not sure why a single mom would lie about something like that. I'm pretty sure Ryan's hiding some shady stuff, but who knows for sure? Do you? Starting off our list today at number 10, we have Isaac Mazarhi. While Isaac Mazarhi was acting as an interviewer for E! on the red carpet for the Golden Globes, he would have a troubling interview with Scarlett Johansson. Scarlett, who was attending as a supporting actress nominee for Match Point, would be left feeling shocked after Isaac decided to touch her chest in the interview because he wanted to know if the actress had a bra under her stunning red dress. As he gave it a quick squeeze, he would then say, I'm just taking notes for next time, I make a... Then he would be cut off by Scarlett who said, what is going on? And then she said, absolutely take all the notes you want. The actress then later said, oh my god. While Isaac did later apologize for offending anyone, the Academy of Motion Pictures of Arts then had to issue their own statement when they said, I can predict we would be extraordinary angry. If that happened on our red carpet, I cannot predict what we would do afterwards. Number nine, 
Stein, Kesha. Remember that time when Jerry Seinfeld savagely refused to hug Kesha during a red carpet interview? Not once, not twice, but three painful times. It was truly the stuff of nightmares, but watching it from the comfort of our own homes made for some great laughs. Although Kesha was silent about the issue for some time, she would come out in 2017 to break the silence on what happened after she rudely interrupted Jerry in an interview to ask him for a hug. Jerry would then later sit down for an interview with AJ Calloway, where he explained that he didn't hug Kesha because he simply didn't know her and admitted, I'm 63. I don't know every pop star. I have to meet someone to say hello. I gotta start somewhere. For Kesha's part, she remained pretty quiet on the whole issue as she was presumably recovering from all the overwhelming embarrassment of being rejected so publicly like that. However, a day after the video went viral, she did post an Instagram photo of her cat with some pretty suggestive hashtags. Hey, my little peaches, are you liking this video so far? If so, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and, you know, subscribe to the channel. Coming number eight, we have Tommy Lee Jones. When Joan and Melissa Rivers were asked who their least favorite person to interview on the red carpet was, they didn't have to think twice before responding and they both ended up saying Tommy Lee Jones. In 2013, HuffPost Live asked the famous mother and daughter duo about their worst celebrity interview and Melissa immediately said Tommy Lee Jones. To which Joan responded by saying, oh, without a question. HuffPost then went on to ask the pair to elaborate on the assertion to which Melissa went on to know he's at the top of everybody's list. He doesn't want to be there, he's unhappy doing the red carpet, and he's going to make everyone else around him just as unhappy in the experience. Joan then would go on to sum up the issue nicely by saying, Jones went to Harvard and is very impressed by that accomplishment. She then went on to say, we all went to Ivy League schools, calm down. Number seven, John Travolta. In 2015, John Travolta once again became the talk of the Oscars after he had a pretty off encounter with Scarlett Johansson that had some of us scratching our heads. Scarlett, who co-starred with John in the film, a love story for Bobby Long, told the Associated Press that the picture of him kissing her on the red carpet was taken out of context. She then went on to say there is nothing strange, creepy, or inappropriate about John Travolta. The image that is circulating is unfortunate, still framed from a live action encounter that was a very sweet and total welcome. She then went on to add that the photo did not reflect the live moment and that we were all being misguided and misinformed and that she hadn't seen John in some years and it was always a pleasure to be greeted by him, yet her face in the photo said otherwise. Number six, Ryan Seacrest. In 2019, Grammy viewers would slam Ryan Seacrest for his awkward Lady Gaga red carpet interview. When Ryan tried to interview the superstar, he didn't so much ask her questions as he just chose to speak to her. And when Lady Gaga did try to speak, Ryan would just end up cutting her off without even giving her the chance to speak properly. He then went on to tell her that she should be performing at the Oscars, for which she is a multiple nominee for, and she responded by saying, that was like, answer my question, but I'm not asking one. Ryan then tried to recover from the interview, but then made an awkward joke about him not asking her questions before saying they were cutting to break. Gaga was a good sport in handling the awkward interview, playing along with his joke that carried on for way too long as there was a delay in going to the advertisements. Before the interview was over, she did pull a host of awkward faces before eventually hugging Ryan and leaving. Number five, David Lee Roth. In 2019, David Lee Roth had a pretty bizarre red carpet interview that taught us all that you can either wear all sorts of outlandish things or nothing, and you can also be as provocative as you want in the name of artistry. And flaunt your questionable decisions all over social media. The king of being completely insane during the red carpet interview will always go to David Lee Roth. David, who was set to perform at the Billboard Music Awards, was being interviewed by E! on the red carpet special. During the interview, he would start out on solid footing, discussing Van Halen's dance influence and how what they did in the 80s has informed today's pop music, which was okay. But things took a quick turn when he decided to quickly go off the rails and somehow West Side Story, Low Riders, and David's abundance of black and Hispanic friends all came up. The whole interview was just him inspiring to get on Miley's level of interviews and it was just completely weird. Go give it a watch. Number four, Tiffany Haddish. When Entertainment Tonight's Lauren Zima seemed to have accidentally called Tiffany Haddish's new Oscar after party dress a costume change, things quickly went south and when Tiffany fired back at Lauren saying, 
dosing, not wearing a costume, and wearing Dose and Gabbana. The actress was clearly not done firing back at the reporter when she then went on to educate her on costumes and outfits by saying, It's called an evening gown, darling. No one is paying for this. I paid for it. It's custom. Thank you. That's when the reporter jokingly announced it was her time to pass away, pretended to faint in an attempt to ease the tension, and Tiffany's response, may I add, was, this is what fame looks like, this is what success looks like, this is what money looks like, and yeah, the moment is just as brutal to watch as you would expect. And take notes, because if it's not Halloween, it's not a costume, and you definitely don't want to make the same mistake unless you want to be embarrassed on the red carpet by some of Hollywood's biggest stars. Coming number three, we have Jack Harlow. Jack Harlow won once left Emma Chamberlain in a pretty awkward red carpet interview. That became one of the most hilarious and viral moments of 2022 when Emma, who is a big YouTuber, was interviewing Jack Harlow for Vogue. What started off as a pretty interesting interview would then randomly turn a different way when Jack decided out of nowhere that he was going to hit her with a totally random love you, and then he quickly turned away and left the interview. Now you're probably wondering what happened next. Well, as the rapper walked away, the camera would zoom in on Emma and it would give a us a glorious image of her staring into space and questioning her entire reality, which was honestly a 10 out of 10 reaction, but considering their age difference, the gesture was just completely weird. Number two, we have Sutton Strachey. Okay, we all know that there's no one more dramatic than the Real Housewives cast. As they always seem to do shady things at the most random times, like the time Sutton Strachey showed up to the People's Choice Awards in 2022. And just like the show, she brought some some drama. When the interviewer asked her if she would like Lisa to return to the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, the reality TV personality definitely didn't have anything nice to say. She then chose to look at the reporter in the camera in total silence. And she stayed like this until the reporter moved on to the next question. It was a question she actually wanted to respond to. The reporter then went on to the next question by saying anyways. But just before, if you caught a look at Sutton, you would see that she was baffled and she she looked pretty mean and scary to the point it would have caused any reporter to end the interview and move on to the next star. It's safe to say that Sutton doesn't really like Lisa and doesn't want her to return to the show anytime soon. And coming at number one today, we have Sasha Baron Cohen. Coming at number one today, we have Sasha Baron Cohen. When he showed up to the red carpet dressed as his character from The Dictator, his look was completely pushing boundaries as he proceeded on the red carpet accompanied by female bodyguards in an urn which he stated was filled with Kim Jong Un ashes. While the whole interview and actions were very off-putting and not really professional, things took a quick turn to the worst when he decided to accidentally dump the material all over Ryan Seacrest's Burberry tux. While everyone was shocked at what actually happened, Ryan Seacrest actually showed the world what a true professional he is and he brushed it off. And first up we have Saoirse Ronan and the awkward mistake. As a journalist, it's your job to get facts as correct as possible, but sometimes Times during certain circumstances, it's easy to get lost in the sauce. At the 2016 Oscars red carpet, an ABC News journalist was speaking to Saoirse when she had stopped to wave at someone, who happened to be writer Nick Hornby, who she had worked with for the film Brooklyn. She was nominated for Best Actress for her role in said film. The reporter confused the small interaction as something between family members and assumed Hornby was her father. When asked, Ronan obviously confirmed that he was the writer and not her father. It was a mild slip up and not a big deal because, you know, things like that happen. Honestly, this taught me to never assume and stick to my script or whatever to avoid any awkward run-ins like that. Next in line, we have Scarlett Johansson and Ryan Seacrest. Johansson was being interviewed at the 2017 Oscars red carpet when she was asked about her shoes. To clarify, Seacrest was asking if she had worn the heels she was wearing to the Oscars rehearsals that they have for the presenters. She responded with, what a ridiculous question to ask, as it seemed to be so random for her. But Seacrest explained that he was asking because he had heard that fellow actress Halle Berry had done it. She accepted his response and continued to explain that she did not wear the heels, opting for comfortability. Up next is interviewer Jess Cagle calling hidden figures by the wrong name. It was around this time in 2017 when people were calling hidden figures hidden fences. The mistake started back at the Golden Globes when the movie Hidden Figures and Fences, very separate movies, were said in the same sentence and that's how the mistake was made. The internet was already preparing themselves for reporters to make that same mistakes at the Oscars and they were right. 
Editor-in-chief of People magazine, Jess Cagle messed it up when trying to compliment it as extraordinary alongside the film Moonlight, and was quick to correct himself, but it happened, and Twitter was there for it. Coming up is Tiffany Haddish's ultimate fangirl moment. So imagine you're at the Oscars and your idol is there. What do you do? Would you wait until they're within your closest vicinity, or do you seek them out? Tiffany Haddish was a woman on a mission as she wanted to greet Meryl Streep. In a video taken at the 90th Academy Awards, you can see Haddish waiting outside of the rope that was meant for the designated red carpet. With Streep just meters away, she probably contemplated her options before just going for it and climbing over the rope. I forgot to mention, she was in a beautiful long gown as well, so to be able to witness that in real time must have been hilarious. Streep was seemingly preoccupied as Haddish steps in and literally blocks her path. The two make eye contact and they hug while exchanging words that are hard to make out. But nevertheless, Haddish got to have her chance with Streep and it was everything. I know some people would think this to be rude which is why I included it, but hey, you do it too. Next on the list is Sasha Baron Cohen and his urn. Cohen arrived at the red carpet dressed head to toe in his costume for his character, Admiral General Aladdin. He arrived with staff personnel, two women who were obviously paid actors and a cremation urn. Aside from his outfit, he was also completely in character too. You know, that method acting really helping him out here. He was being interviewed by Ryan Seacrest, and Seacrest played into the bit as well. As he explained why he brought the urn, he inconspicuously lifted it and let it spill all over Seacrest. Clearly, it was a setup, probably some sort of marketing strategy from the movie's team. Up next again is Tiffany Haddish and her interview. She looked stunning in her custom made green gown when a reporter asked if she had done a costume change. Perhaps slightly put off by the term costume, Haddish goes off to explain that it was not a costume but a luxury Dolce & Gabbana gown. The reality of the awkwardness sets in as the reporter tries to stealthily move on but Haddish wants to reaffirm herself. She continues saying, it's called an evening gown, darling. Watching the clip, you can tell the reporter regrets everything as she continues to play cool and admits defeat, but the damage was done and Haddish was not. She explained that the dress was paid by herself and that that was what success looked like. Coming up is Zuri Hall blanking out at the red carpet. Like I said, the hustle and bustle of these types of events are the partial reasons why reporters tend to mess things up. And it's, it's fine, we're all human here, which is why I think E! News reporter Zuri Hall can back me up on that statement. She arrived at the 2017 Oscars red carpet in a beautiful sheer and feathery dress. Perhaps it was so beautiful she ended up forgetting who actually designed it. Is it disrespectful to forget the name of the designer? I think it's an honest mistake, but that doesn't take away the minor embarrassment she probably felt while that was televised across national television. Up next, we have Ashley Graham's interview with Jason Momoa and Lisa Bonet. Momoa and his wife showed up to the 2019 Oscar Awards when it happened. When they were interviewed by model Ashley Graham, she requested that he give her a haka move. Haka refers to the many ceremonial dances from the Maori people. Momoa is immediately hesitant and it doesn't go unnoticed by Graham as she eggs him on to do it. Bonet is clearly unimpressed, offering some type of explanation that you can't hear what she's saying. But her husband cuts it off and gives Graham what she wants. The internet was not happy with this exchange. One user called her corny while many others said that she was disrespecting his culture as he is from Hawaii and not New Zealand where the Maori culture originates. At least he's familiar with some of the customs though, as he explained in a completely separate interview unrelated to the Oscars that his family's roots go back and forth from Hawaii and New Zealand at some point. Regardless, Graham pushing him to do that wasn't a good look for her. Coming up are the South Park creators and their red carpet looks. Creators of the hit cartoon comedy, Trey Parker and Matt Stone confessed to everything that went down that evening in the year 2000. To put it shortly, they did not take anything seriously, despite Parker being nominated for an award. The original plan was to dress up in duck costumes, but out of fear they would be denied entry, they went for dresses to blend in with everyone else. So that's what they did. They dressed up in their dresses that were nods off to outfits Jennifer Lopez and Gwyneth Paltrow had worn previously, and to top it all off, were also extremely under the influence. They explained even stepping out of the vehicle was an experience due to their incapacitated state. They managed to get through the carpet and the interviews. They were smart and had it all planned out, vowing that they don't acknowledge the dresses and if they were asked to divert and avoid it at all costs. 
Next up is Dakota Johnson, low-key snapping at her mom. During the 2015 Academy Awards, Johnson brings her mother, fellow actress Melanie Griffith, as her date. Knowing Johnson and her collected bluntness, what happened shouldn't come off as surprising. While they were being interviewed together, Griffith was asked if she had watched her daughter's movie. She declined saying it would be strange. The movie in question, Fifty Shades of Grey, and we're all aware of the nature of that film. So to not want to see it for those reasons as a mother, it's totally understandable. Johnson cuts in and said it would be fine and she'll watch it one day. After all, it's just a movie since everything is fictional. When the reporter accepts this answer and reaffirms how well her daughter did in the film, Griffith continues and says, Well, she's a really good actress, I don't need to see it to know how good she is, which sparked mild irritation from Johnson, who gets a little snappy and says she doesn't need to watch it. At number 10, we have Thinking Kate Hudson won an Oscar. In the world of Hollywood, winning an Oscar is one of the biggest career-changing moments. So when ABC reporter George Penicino said, Kate, you know what it's like to win an Oscar, to which she was uncomfortable and replied, um, I've never won an Oscar. For some background information, Kate Hudson starred in movies like Glass Onion, Mother's Day with Jennifer Aniston, as well as How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days. So I can understand why why he thought she would have won. But when you're an interviewer, it's important to have a base of knowledge on the people who are going to be there, so as to not embarrass yourself. And this was no exception. Thankfully for George, he wasn't fired because of his little live television slip up, but it's safe to say that he has learned his lesson about making assumptions. Number nine, Zac Efron's Love Tubes. Zac rose to fame as a Disney darling, playing the leading role of Troy Bolton in the popular high school musical series. Since his Disney days, Zac has lent his face and voice to several projects over the years, but the red carpet event that we're talking about today was for the animated Dr. Seuss movie, The Lorax. Zack, who voiced the main character of the film, was walking the red carpet when he suddenly handed his assistant something in his pocket. As he handed them the product, something fell out of his pocket and onto the ground. That something is a word that I can't say online, so let's just call him love tubes. Zack's love tube wrapper was flat on the carpet right there for the world to see. He quickly picked it up, but the damage was already done. In the first interview, following this incident, the interviewer asked Zach if anything unplanned had happened to him recently, and he then explained that it was a complete accident, that there was no pre-show pocket check, anything that could have prevented it. Well, Illumination didn't like that excuse, and they also didn't like their main star being associated with such an adult product. So, when the plans for a Lorax sequel were brought to the studios, Zach's name was left out and replaced by another star. I guess whoever they picked wasn't famous enough because the project was ultimately shelved by the studio, and Zach was able to find work somewhere else in Baywatch. At number eight, we have Jim Carrey's existential rant. Jim Carrey is a character who has had many varying roles. From The Grinch in the iconic live action version of How the Grinch Stole Christmas, he was in The Cable Guy with Matthew Broderick, and he most recently played Dr. Eggman in the live action Sonic the Hedgehog movies. His IMDb spans on and on, but something important to know about him is that he had really bad depression and really let himself go over the years. One of those moments, we really saw how the mind of a genius works was when he was on a rant during an interview at the 2017 Harper's Bazaar Icons party. No one really knew why he showed up in the first place if he was so unhappy to be there, but former E! reporter Kat Sadler came up to him to ask him questions. He leaned into the mic and he said, there is no meaning to any of this. When she asked why he was attending the party, he said that he wanted to find the most meaningless thing he could come to and join, and there he was. Sadler tried to pry about other things and what the term icon meant to him, but he continued to spew existential nonsense that made everyone uncomfortable aside from him. It may not have been gross, but his career did begin to decline, both before and after this. If there is one thing that should be known about Taylor Swift is that she can end entire careers with one conversation. In 2015, Taylor was on the red carpet for the Grammy Awards when she was interviewed by Entertainment Tonight. The woman who interviewed her started the interview by asking her cameraman to pan up and down, literally checking Taylor out with this massive camera. It's not weird at all. After going along with the bit for a moment and telling the camera about her dress, the interviewer said that she honestly just wanted a shot of Taylor's legs because as she said before, Taylor is going to be going home with more than a trophy. 
maybe a man. While Taylor didn't appreciate that comment or the assumption, she did not laugh and then proceeded to tell the interviewer that she would be going home with no men, just hanging out with friends, maybe some of her cats. While the majority of the interview went well, the interviewers were reprimanded behind the scenes by Taylor herself. The news of Taylor's dislike for the interviewers made its way up to the top, where the ET executives decided to keep them off of the red carpet for a while. Remember, keep your creepy camera gestures to yourself, lady. At number six, we have David Letterman with Jennifer Aniston. David Letterman used to be the host of The Tonight Show before Jimmy Fallon took over. He's also a comedian who was successful for many years, and some comedians can take a sketch too far or commit to a bit that makes people uncomfortable. And that's exactly what happened to a young Jennifer Aniston while on the show with him. They were making conversation, as one does, but then he got up and tried to eat her hair. I understand that you can really like someone as an actor, but when you are actively trying to eat their hair on live television, that is just too far. However, like the true professional she is, she let him. And there are photos out there of David Letterman leaning over Miss Aniston with her hair in his mouth. Number five, John Mayer. John may be known for spending time with the ladies, but it's not all peaches and cream. The musician was doing an interview with Playboy magazine in 2010. Now I know it involves Playboy, who are notoriously provocative, but even they thought this interview was just a bit much. John gets into some pretty graphic depictions of things that he wanted to do to Jessica Simpson, using language that cannot be repeated online. But he then ventures off the physical intimacy thing and instead begins to speak about his, and I quote, Hood Pass, claiming that he had become so popular among black people that he could get away with anything he wanted, and he then called it the N-word pass. Yeah, not a great moment for this guy. Following the interview, fans were beyond upset at his behavior and his attitude towards women and honestly just people in general. Many turned on John, making a massive dent in his career, rightfully so, and nowadays this is one of the only things that he is remembered for. Well, that and his really bad cameo in Get Hard. At number four, we have Jay Leno questioning Kanye West. Jay Leno was the host of yet another late night show, and back in 2009, he had Kanye West on his show. You see, the event that caused this was Kanye West interrupting young Taylor Swift's mid-acceptance speech for the best music video, I might add. To say that Beyonce had the best music video and should have won, in front of an audience, on TV. For some context, Kanye's mother had passed away in 2007, just a couple years prior to the incident. Jay Leno knew this, and he said that he was fortunate enough to have met his mother. So, Leno, in a very disrespectful fashion, asked Kanye if his mother would have been disappointed in him for doing that, and asked if she would have lectured him. You can see how shocked he is, and how hurt he is hearing those words. He almost had no response. Whether or not you're a fan of him, that was still so unprofessional and cruel. Number three, Amy Schumer. In the mid-2010s, comedian Amy Schumer was named one of Time Magazine's top 100 most influential people and was made to attend a red carpet event to celebrate with her fellow influencers. Two of them were Kanye West and Kim Kardashian. While discussing the incident on The Graham Norton Show, Amy revealed that there was a planned prank on Kim and Yee. Her goal was to get them to crack a smile and get some good fun pics from this event, but Kim and Kanye did not find this situation funny and continued to walk past her as she fell in front of them in a dramatic fashion. The best picture is just Kim staring at Amy for a moment being like, okay, and then just moving on. While the moment was meant to create a fun scene, it instead made Amy look like she had some kind of grudge against Kim and Kanye. While not an interview, the incident on the red carpet forced Comedy Central to postpone a season of her show until things were sorted out with Kim. Well, it turned out that not only did Kim not care about this, but she did end up finding the entire thing funny. With the two apparently now being close friends, Amy Amy even made a cameo on Kim's new reality series, The Kardashians. At number two, we have The Marvel Interview. I use such a vague title because there is a lot to unpack about this interview with Robert Downey Jr. He had a very rocky upbringing, and he was involved in a lot of illegal activities, had substance issues, and has an internet-famous mugshot. But he's been clean for years, all thanks to his wife. 
So when the man doing the interview for a Marvel movie pressed about his past, it made him very uncomfortable. And it wasn't just asking some surface level questions. He asked about his relationship with his father and mentioned how he has opened up about his issues with liquids and substances and his upbringing. He then went on to ask RDJ if he really thought he was free from all that or something you think about. This was when RDJ cut him off left the room and walked away from the interview. Imagine the audacity the interviewer must have had to even think about asking Robert such a thing. And even though he had been clean for so long and had finally gained the confidence to speak up about it. And at number one, Will Smith. That's right, Will Smith is on this list for slapping someone, but it's not Chris Rock. Today we're talking about an incident on the red carpet that left one paparazzo with a massive red mark on their face and a fired stamp on their forehead. Will was walking the red carpet in 2013 giving people interviews when a Ukrainian comedian named Vitaly Sedjik approached him. A man who is unfortunately world famous for being an absolutely terrible person, especially towards celebrities. He pretended to be a reporter and started interviewing Will Smith, but then he suddenly pulls Will towards him and tries to kiss him on his cheeks and his mouth. Well, Will obviously shoves him back and gave him a little, hey bud, no thank ya, just a little backhand to the face. A team of security following Mr. Smith picked this guy up and carried him away like the toddler he was. Who knew Will was practicing for his Oscar slap all the way back then? Sedgwick was finally reprimanded for his actions and was actually made to pay a hefty fine for attempting to force himself on Will Smith. Needless to say, that guy works for himself now. 